reality is what we are perceiving and particularly reality is shaped within our own minds and consciousness because sometimes there's something before us that two or three people are perceiving yet they perceive it differently they have a different sense of what is reality so in this material world there's a lot of relativity as to how we perceive things but underlying what we are perceiving there's an unchanging nature of things i'll start us off with an example which all of us are familiar with uh, we all stand in front of mirrors Yes? Today, some stood there longer than others. <coughs> and when you look into the mirror, uh, what do you see? Anyone want to say? It's not a trick question. We see ourselves? Yes, we see ourselves. Someone confirms that. So, we say we see ourselves. Question maybe then, if that is you that you're seeing, and if you are hungry or thirsty, can you drink what you're seeing in the mirror? Can you drink the water? Someone is there standing with you, says, I see you in the mirror, you're also saying you're seeing yourself. But then what you're seeing, is that you? Is that real? <laughs> Computing. Say? I think it's not. I mean, it's just reflection. It's a reflection? Anyone else has some? I think it's not real, it's a reflection. I mean, you can also not see your back in the mirror, so it's not really you, it's just mm. like yes. one, one dimensional as well, or two dimensions. Yes. Uh, any of you have um, you've taken a, a picture of yourself, genuine ladies, as they take <laughs> pictures in front of the mirror? Yeah? <laughs> Anyone? Done that? Yeah? standard and you try it when you get home you're holding your phone in your right hand and then when you look at the picture where is the phone if you try it it comes off as though the phone is on the left hand get you out of your comfort zone i need five people to come. So one, two, three more. Come to the front We'll give you an extra seat. Come. <laughs> yeah, because it's like an abstract thing we're talking about. Sometimes I'm sure every I'm using you, what you say, what you're talking about, what you're Okay, so, okay, it's fine with us. Maybe we can. But then, now, this will be, you name the senses. What which sense do you want? Sight. Sight. <laughs> <laughs> Touch. Touch. Taste. Hearing. Hearing. Speak. <laughs> <laughs> so then, everyone's got these. And they need to be controlled. So we need two other people. Please come, guys. Two forty-five minutes done, and then this gentleman will kick us out. <laughs> so chop, chop, come. <laughs> together, togetherness. So you come behind us. Yes, we need more people. We need two more just after this, but then yes. So you two, you come here. So then you are the mind. So imagine the. 
the reins, you know, the horses, there's these reins that are holding the horses. So there's five ropes that are coming off of us that are in your control, yeah? So you are, you are like this, yeah? <laughs> And so, now we need the rider, the person who's uh, riding the chariot, one more. Please come. Come, sir. And then, you've got nice good hair, you'll be the soul. So you go and ride. <laughs> okay. So then he, he is the intelligence. So the senses are bringing in the information. You know, oh, this thing's good. You, you will have sense. So it feels good. Feels good. It looks beautiful. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. <laughs> smells good. <laughs> and what's the mind thinking? Uh, yeah, it smells good. It tastes good. We want to enjoy Yeah, we want to enjoy this. And then, maybe I think, uh, the, what's the favorite beer in, in, in Switzerland? Like, homemade beer that's famous thing. Okay, you, you people don't drink this. <laughs> but you don't want to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Gents, okay, your father, which, which is his favorite beer? Anyone? Falschlussen. Mm. Falschlussen. <laughs> so if I think, oh, it tastes good, I take one, two, three. You say, okay, it's nice. Intelligence, what can you tell me now? I, I'm on my third and fourth. What? How can you tell me more? Yes, you're saying more. Uh, tomorrow I've got a job interview, so what are you telling me? Then maybe stop. You shouldn't do this, huh? This too is enough because you don't want to just get to the interview like this, you know? You want to be prim and proper. So the, the mind is the most to control these senses. <laughs> But the mind tends to just think what feels good. Bring it on, it feels good. The intelligence is supposed to then think, control these guys. Will we be able to function tomorrow? Is this good for us in 10 years? Should I actually be you know, taking these drugs? <laughs> and ultimately, <laughs> ultimately, the soul is, there's a carriage. So you have the horses, you have the reins, you have the driver of the ch chariot, and then you have the passenger, the soul. So if the horses decide to just go wherever they want, the, the soul in the carriage <coughs> is traumatized because it's unsafe. It's, it's not going according to where he wants to go. So we are that soul. We have an intelligence which is supposed to discriminate and manage this mind that just wants to enjoy the senses. Senses can't help themselves, you always have to perceive. That's why you're seeing in the mirror and you're thinking that you, it's just what the eyes are bringing in. But the mind, um, yeah, yeah, it looks good. Put more blush this side, you know, put more mascara, yeah. It's, then it looks good. The intelligence is thinking, nah, last week you did it much better. Maybe you're wasting time with it. The soul. Yes, you have a question. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Like, I like that. I, how do we know that we have a soul? Ah, uh, so soul <laughs> is um, its quality is consciousness, awareness. So everyone is aware of whatever's going on with them. So awareness or consciousness is a symptom of life. So some people may call this life just the spark or they call it consciousness, or they call it the spirit, or spirit soul, sometimes you just say soul. So that is said to be the actual individual. How we see that that exists is all of us sleep and have dreams. And when we wake up, some dreams we remember. Yeah? Some dreams uh, we forget. And uh, so, Someone, even though the, the awareness is no longer flowing into the world when you're awake, is now interacting with the mind you dream. You know what you dreamt of. Sometimes there's dreamless sleep. They ever slept, they don't even remember 
what happened. But in the morning you wake up, you, you feel like, oh, I had such a good rest. Like I was knocked out. So still, you are aware that you had a good rest, even though you, you practically, your, your, your mind, your, your memory wasn't working, no dreams, you're definitely not perceiving anything. But still, you are aware, because the consciousness is never out. It's the living principle. But isn't that just intelligence? No. Just with the senses? No. Intelligence is a tool of you. Uh, it is what helps you discriminate on your behalf, the living principle. But what's happening is that we start to identify ourselves with our mind and our intelligence. Just like this, how many of us uh, speak like this, you know, I feel like this, you know. We, we identify so much with our feelings, especially the ladies. I mean, it's just, it's nature made it in this way. <coughs> uh, we, instead of, so the mind is supposed to think, that means there's that logic there and uh, calculation. There's also the willpower comes from, it is within there, and then feelings. But what's most effective is how we feel, more than the information of uh, logic sometimes. That's why people uh, identify with their feelings. But then, sometimes, people tell you, I love you, I need love you. <laughs> and then, maybe one week, two weeks, one year, and the same, I hate you so much. Or, some, it doesn't even have to take months. You know, how you feel about someone five minutes ago. Yeah, I came in here, you probably had some feeling about me, <laughs> you probably have some feeling now. Uh, you may be thinking about a certain restaurant. Yeah, I like that place. And then you go, there's something's not like previous. Now you feel different. So feelings, they change. Uh, so the point I was uh, bringing across is that the feelings and the thinking and the will is combination of mind and intelligence. But for whom are we trying to do the things that we're doing? So that means we have to come to the point of, who am I? That question, we, we don't say I mind or I intelligence. We do say I phone, you know, because it's just a marketing gimmick. But when we speak, <laughs> we understand that I have a mind, it's my mind. I have a body, it's my body. I have an intelligence, it's my intelligence. So who is this? Who is saying this is my intelligence, this is my mind, this is my mind? Who is that I who says these are my things? There's always that observer, conscious being that is observing the workings of the mind, who sometimes his intelligence works well, sometimes it's flop. So that's the consciousness, that's the spark of that, that's you and I. That's the person we've put at the back, who, if he's not getting proper knowledge, is just being dragged along by the programming of the senses and the mind. So that is the reality we find ourselves in, that all the propaganda that's been put in front of us of what success is, what happiness is, uh, what you should do to stand out, is what we are playing on, because that's what's been marketed at, as this will make you happy. And people are doing all these things, and still they're feeling depressed, not satisfied, but I'm doing everything the culture systems do. But they're not marketing that you are not just your body, your mind, your looks, your educational qualifications. You are a spiritual being. So in fact, you are wearing this body for life in this dimension of beginning and end. But you don't belong in this dimension of beginning and end. You are an eternal being. You are an anti-material being. There's a different environment that you need that fulfills heart space, that deals with things of fulfillment, love, relationship, unconditional things. So Veda, in its actual knowledge, is to inform us that we are immersed in the sensual reality, temporary reality. But we are hankering for things of the eternal reality. Here's the thing, which is eternal. 
and exist, but we look for it here. Like nobody wants to die. Yes? We tell you no one. People can say, well, I'm not afraid of it. Huh? Oh, yeah, some people want to die because the stuff is just frustrating. They don't see the point. Huh? They may be. So they just want to end it. But they think it's going to end. But what's ending is this machine. At the end, we say, oh, what's your name? Nicholas. Nicholas is gone. People say, rest in peace. Some say he's gone to a better place. So who is gone? My body. No, the body is in the coffin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Nicholas, oh, such a good guy. So what is no longer in the body? It is the person who was there yesterday. Because when you go to sleep, Nicholas, nobody's crying. Oh, because they know you're in there. But now the same body looks like that when you see it, not out. <laughs> but, <laughs> but now we say, not there. So the, the spark of life, it's like you have the computer or the TV. It looks the same. If it's plugged in, it will play because the electricity flows. But if there's no electricity, it still looks the same, but it won't work. So there's also a power source for this human machine. And that power source is a spiritual spark. It is what we are, that's the consciousness. It powers this machine of earth, water, fire, and ether. So great education is to bring us to the reality of that spiritual spark. And then help us to be immersed in that reality. Instead of being further removed from even this temporary reality, here, now you have that some more, you're lost in another, uh, you, you're lost to this one and you're lost to the actual reality. Uh, but they have to create immersive because by nature, nature has provided a suit, a VR suit, which is so immersive, eh? sight, taste, touch. Then there's also genitals, it's another sense, yes? That, those, that sense is also looking for something. And even through it, you get bigger commitments to do so many things because of the pleasure of the genitals. This whole city has been built. <laughs> it's all about uh, creating an environment where we can enjoy. But then we know it's temporary, yet we don't want this temporary thing. We want things, like people say, love you forever. And then they, they, they date for a year, or they marry for 10 years. So why are they talking about forever? That's because they are a particle that is forever. And what they truly desire is something which is forever. But here they are not able to get it. Hence the thing of death. You don't want to die? But the body must die. Okay, so we just do a revision of our setup. The five forces are the senses. The senses are supposed to be under the charge of the mind. The mind. And who's in charge of the mind? And the who's supposed to be in charge of the whole thing? The soul. Says nothing. <laughs> Not no, 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 somebody needs to be in charge. That you are in charge. That's when you decided to come here. Imagine someone else was in charge, manipulated you to end up. Uh, yes, so another conscious being you can suggest something. Yeah. Okay, so questions or discussion. But thank you guys. Give a round of applause for our team. So as far as the technology goes, we are not here to, to hate on technology. Technology has its uses, uh, like these uh, VR uh, that are being used in education and health. Of course, VR and AR, these immersive technologies, 
are also be used for entertainment. Uh, so we find that there are also drawbacks uh, to this like addiction. There was one man uh, on one of these talk shows. He brought his wife and you know, like a Dr. Phil type thing. So what is the problem, Nancy? No, you know, my husband Jim, you know, he's not doing his thing, he's supposed to be working and maintaining our family. All he does is sit on that couch and plays TV games. And Jim is sitting there crying, you know, she doesn't understand, you know. I've built cities in that game, I've achieved so much, you know, they have these games where you, you know, you, you're achieving things, you've got your this and your that and your... So the man now, he's neglecting the actual reality of his life, wife and kids. He's now identifying with some sort of success within the TV game construct. And, and so he's become addicted to that and he's identifying to it, so that becomes a drawback. And, you know, other times is that because you are using your eyes, your sense, your mind, it can be harmful. At the same time, they can use it to train people, you know, in spaces that are safe, they can simulate uh, dangerous conditions for people to learn how to do. So there's always pros and cons. But for the spiritual conversation, uh, we think of this by considering what is really, really reality? And what is the spiritual reality? What is the psychological reality? What is the physical reality? And how can we uh, live in such a way that we honor our true identity as spiritual beings? That we don't become so absorbed in that which is temporary but we use that which is temporary for the benefit of the soul. Just like uh, your education. Someone can say, oh, this education, you know, it's a temporary thing, you're a spiritual being to create it. But that's not uh, practical because we are in this world. So you want to get skills, you want to be able to earn a living so that you can have food, clothing, and shelter and then you have facility to actually apply yourself for fulfillment, for satisfaction, for spiritual growth. So we utilize the human body and mind and senses, but we empower the system by giving spiritual knowledge. That's how the intelligence becomes strong enough to control the mind. Because the mind is just, the programming is running, you know. Uh, we can I was in Berlin, and from Thursday night, we were going out on the street with a friend of mine. We had our harmonium instruments and katas, and we were singing Hare Krishna from like 10 till midnight. And there's hundreds of people walking up and down. Each one has their liquid courage, you know. <laughs> and so that becomes like a programming. You know, Thursday, Friday, this is what you do, you know. There's a whole Netflix, for example. You know, you get there, you know, your weekend is just block. People, they binge watch series, hours. Your whole life just, you're just there and everything's being supplied. Uh, so, proper knowledge is to help us not to just be downed down and just like hacked by all these central inputs. But we want to have control so that uh, we manifest a deeper quality of life. You know, we want to actually connect to people. Or we actually want love, we want proper relationships. And that requires people who are in touch with their inner being. And, and that's the hope for all you young folks is that you don't uh, manifest a society of people with so much connectivity in terms of tech, but no actual connections to people. I, I see that a lot, you know, uh, 
countries like in Southern Africa, where I come from, it, it's not so far away technologically or the other ways with this, but you find that persons are still able to interact with other persons. But you, when you find places where there's a lot of uh, money and technology, when you ask somebody sometimes, yo, where, how can I find this? You just think, why don't you Google it? Uh, the technology makes everyone feel like they're self-sufficient and individual units. I can do what I want from wherever I am. I don't need anybody. That's why the children are just closing their doors in the house. And one couple from nowhere on the train was telling me, they had a big house, they got three boys. And the one elder son, they hardly saw him. Because he had, in his room he had uh, an end suit, so you know, he's got his bathroom and everything there, he's got his computer, his internet connection. He just walks past them hey? <laughs> and off to his own apartment in the house. And what these parents did, they sold the big house and they got a small apartment. And the kids were in the big house when they were being asked, you know, you should clean your room, come clean the room. They're saying, we didn't ask for this big house. So they let them, okay, they got a smaller house. And now everyone is within contact. There's no running off to your room to eat. Everyone could sit at the same table and have dinner. And they found that, you know, their home life improved. They began to connect because, like us here, you know, supposed to be a family that eats together, prays together, that these days praise, oh my God, why praise? <laughs> that it stays together. Because eating, we're nourishing the biological machine. We're all appreciating everything is nice and it's been cooked by mom or dad. Uh, so there's an exchange of emotions, of love. It's connected. Because when you cook the food, the consciousness is put in that food. That's why your mom's cooking tastes better than so many other things. She may not be the best cook, but because she cooks from, a, from love, when you eat it, it tastes very good. You, you want your mother's cooking. <laughs> so yes, uh, eat together, praise together. This praying is not just in some, just having some belief system in the sky. Uh, these days, there's, there's, a, there's all the information to confirm the intelligence behind things you can see. And so, the praying part, as we're doing either meditation or whatever, we're now nourishing the actual being, the soul. So because we, we eat together, we nourish the physical, we pray together, we nourish the spiritual, then it's easy to stay together because we can honor each other on these levels. Yeah, so, yeah, we wish to see happier and happier people. And you guys, you have everything, no more struggles. Like the parents, they had to go through so much. In Europe, there was a world war. So, like in Germany, they were telling me, their parents, the whole idea was work, work, work. Look, the Germany was like finished, but now they're like party number one, number two here. And then the kids, they're, they're just trying to enjoy the thing. So the parents are always thinking, you guys, you want to appreciate what we did. And, uh, so because all the facility has been made for us, let's not now become destroyed by the facility. What's the saying? Um, hard times. They make strong people. Strong people. <laughs> and then strong people, they create good times. And then what happens with all the good times again? Weak people. Yes, it creates this cycle that we are at the level where some have worked hard and created all these things. And now we just want to be the enjoyers of things. And what it does, it creates classic demand to be used as people. So, yeah, we, 
we're in interesting times. Uh, and uh, spiritual knowledge, as what they discuss in this Veda Forum, is, is very good to give you the tools to balance uh, this over sensual uh, environment that comes to the young with the needs of the self. So, does anyone have any thoughts or comments or, or questions? If you want to share something about what you picked up today? Okay. How do you nourish your consciousness? And how do you practice? Like, I'm um, getting back into the control and uh, um, the same thing, mind, senses, and chemicals. That's a good question. Um, so it's a, it's a matter of um, for lack of a better word. You need a taste or an experience or something to then desire more of it. Just like now you're eating, as you put in your own tongue and chew and swallow, you know if you want more or not or particular thing. So spiritually, our technology is mantra. We do mantra meditation. Uh, I chant the Hare Krishna mantra. It's recommended in the Vedas that in every age of the Earth's cycle, there's a particular process that makes self-realization quick and efficient. So the time that we're in, it's called quarreling hypocrisy this age. So this Ma mantra, is given Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So it, it comes with different music. So the music is like the different outfits. You know, you wear different outfits, it brings out a different side of your beauty or it makes you feel a certain way. So the mantra, when we sing it in different melodies, it it's attractive in different ways. So it's an easy way, music and sound. So as you absorb yourself in the spiritual sound, it rubs off on your covered consciousness and it removes all that programming that just wants the temporary. It helps you to value yourself as the spiritual being. And so then as you experience the beauty of it, the tranquility, the peace, that you get from it, you do more. So, yeah, it's a matter of starting and uh, it will be confirmed by your own experience. Yeah, my personal one is that we have been doing it a while and it just gets better and better. It's nice and sweet. We do it even we do it 10 to midnight in Berlin, just on the side of the street. And my friend somehow that his hat was sitting there. And people thought that was for donations. <laughs> from just singing for a good time, and people were giving us money. <laughs> yeah, people would come to say, oh, this is so nice. The language of the song, nobody knows. Any one of you know Sanskrit? You speak it at home or something? No? We don't. Hare Krishna, Hare, what is this? I don't know this language from nowhere. But like fire. Fire burns, those who know it burns and those who don't. It's its nature to burn. So spiritual sound is its nature to inspire us spiritually, to, to clear off material misconceptions. So we'll give you a little starter pack. Should I try it out, eh? Okay? <coughs> So I'm not really trying to formulate it, I didn't really think about it, but I guess if I were to find myself um, in a certain situation where, let's say, I had let myself, I had let my senses get the, get the better of me, and I'm aware of it, but I don't know how to, I don't want to say get back, but let's say find peace How would I? So, 
it's good that you really know that the senses of someone got the better of me. So it's half the job is done. You know, you diagnose, okay, there's a problem here. Yeah. So now we want to make sure, you know, once bitten, twice shy. We don't want to that happen again. So sometimes it's the cause is environmental. The environmental <coughs> sort of makes you susceptible to this type of uh, sensual allurement. Um, sometimes it's, it's just within us that there's a desire that always wells up and then kind of pushes us even against our will to do something. Uh, so if you speak to someone else who is also aware of trying to control the senses guide them, it's not only just you against your own machinery. You, you get help. So it's a mentoring comes into to place. And then once you're also accountable now, it also gives you that inspiration to be vigilant. You know, you don't want to be that person that's always failing the same test. Um, yeah, that's why we try to provide community. That we're practically going through similar things, all of us. But because we are dealing with them in isolation, then we think our burdens are the heaviest. Whereas if we actually communicate about what the dimension of life we're in is presenting, what problems are there, we find that we can assist each other in so many ways and inspire each other in so many ways. So I think this is a good step. You, you're here, you're acknowledging some of these things. Communicate more. There's, there's personalities here who can assist you in more detail. Okay, you you really shut this. Okay, don't yeah. No, don't worry. <laughs> No, it's okay. Um, so you talked a little bit about the uh, previous generations, and there, there is a little bit of uh, tension between the two. So what, in your opinion, is like the purpose of, of our generation for us young people in general? Good question. Uh, yeah. Uh, the purpose of this generation. Self-realization, <coughs> self self-actualization. This generation doesn't lack in food, clothing, and shelter. So previously, people didn't have time to go deeper, to go the inward part, because things aren't working outside. You may just get shot by the next tribe to grab the land. Oh, uh, <laughs> you can't even go that far back. Huh? <laughs> yeah, those were problems previously. So now, everything is kind of provided for. But now our problems have to do, we can't enjoy enough, we're dissatisfied with all the trinkets at our disposal. So we should recognize that what we're looking for in fulfillment and happiness uh, is not what the external environment will give. But we have to now <coughs> learn the inner world. We have to understand the mind, the senses, and understand what are we connected to? There's a higher uh, dimension that we're connected to, a higher being. We have to be seek out God. <laughs> this is the God. Actually, it's primitive not to see the obvious existence of God. But our generation has been convinced that that is being advanced to doubt the obvious that's perceivable and the magical arrangements that we can, we think that they've come from chance. They've come from nothing. We'd rather credit nothing to the intricacy of the eye, of the information of the DNA, and all just happened. Yet, a human being who mimics uh, Sunflower and paints it nicely. We come and walk around there. We've come to look at this art. Oh wow, he's an amazing artist. The, the, the sunflower already exists. Somebody already designed it. He just copied it and put it on canvas, and we want to honor him as so wonderful. Yet we cannot see what brain put colors in the soil, what brain put tastes in the earth. What brain put uh, 
the beauty of the rose, for example. Look at the rose. And just think, you know. She's beautiful. Oh my God, thank you. Oh. So that beauty that you perceive there, it comes from the source of all beauty. It's just that we've not been taught to reference things to the source. <coughs> it's like the child who thinks milk comes from the shop. So she's right, you know, they go and buy it at the shop, but the grown-up knows not there's some cows somewhere where the milk comes from. So he's seeing a, a bigger picture. So without the source of all energies, then our knowledge although it may be given PhD stamp, is ignorance. So your generation uh, know more than what materialistic concepts are presenting. Look for the spiritual dimension of things. There you will find the charm, the mystery, the intrigue. You, you will find the inspiration. You will feel connected to something bigger than just Whoever is trying to run Earth Planet, you know, World Economic Forum, and all their friends. <laughs> yeah? Um, so, I have a question regarding um, neuroscience. Mm -hmm. So, there's been like major progress in basically encoding what our brain, how our brain works, right? Mm -hmm. And um, <coughs> just want to know your opinion about it. Like, uh, what do you think? Do you think it has like any. I don't know, effects on like how people maybe perceive what consciousness actually is, or, or something like that? Yeah. yeah, science is making progress in, in many fields. And one thing about it is that science is, is trying to understand phenomena that already exist. Like, the brain is already there and it's working. So they're trying to figure out how it's working. But while they're figuring how it's working, then we think that now they know why it's working. Or how, I mean, they, they cannot tell us how did it come to be, except just the biological processes that they are observing. So it's, there's many implications, always some positive, and then because they are also sinister players, once they know how the machinery works, they want to hijack it for the goals of profit and control. And most of the science is sponsored. Yeah, so they have particular goals that they want to achieve. So we hope, you know, if you guys are like people of wisdom culture, even though you work in these fields, you bring the dimension where it is not exploiting and and imprisoning people, but it's going to free people, it's going to enhance their life. <coughs> that creates just some... Yeah, you don't know, you, neural link is coming, you know? So do you really want to be at internet speeds? You can't handle your mind now with whatever's going on. Can you imagine you can't handle your own Instagram, just scrolling days is, is information over. <laughs> now, do you really want to be like jacked up to some? But they can send it to us. No, you no, know, because the technology will be much faster, so you want to keep up. And so then we have to get your nice chair there where you go to play game. <laughs> It's crazy, but it's, it's going on. So we can't really stop the investments that have gone in you know, AI and you know, all that are showing you where the future is going. That it's, it's just so digital and detached. But when we are like spiritually aware, conscious, then we're not going to buy into these things wholesale. We'll see the utility of it. But then we're not just going to become, you know, uh, zombies controlled by these things. In fact, we can even try to create a, a counter uh, narrative that the land is already there. Let's get good seeds. Let's put them in the ground. Let's get the, 
the vegetables and the grains that we need. The cows are there, keep them. They, they are almost like pets when they keep them. You can get milk from them, you can make so many varieties of food. Uh, so what we need is simple actually, good air, some water, some good food, and good relationships. All these bolts and nuts and cables and internet speeds are not what nourishes the soul. In fact, they tell us, they create a dependency. And then whoever controls that machinery controls our lives. In South Africa, they have, they call it load shedding kind. It's, it's basically blackouts. <laughs> they just call it blackouts. The power goes doosh. And uh, so they've got an app that shows you when it's going to go off, you know, is it two hours, is it time, is four hours. And now we're conditioned, you know, it's just you live with load shedding, you look at the app. And, uh, but I was saying that the economy and so many things are depending on the electrical grid. But if someone can just shut it down, so can you imagine on different aspects when now what they want us central digital, what's this CD, what they call it? central bank digital currencies. So it sounds progressive, like right? digital money, you know, you don't have to, uh, you just tap and wave and blah. But then if, you, if your money is controlled by someone else, you can just imagine. We, 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 we don't want to be controlled by religion sometimes, right? Religion. We don't want to go to my God, oh God, you know. Now think of the men and women who are like Mula. You think they've got some wonderful ideas and plans for you? So, it needs a, a rebellious spirit, intelligent rebellion. We've got the tools we need for what we need. But we're not just going to buy into some dystopian future that you're promising us will be wonderful. So spirituality, in fact, isn't just for going off into the mountains to pray because you just want to be spiritual. It has to translate that our lives are in service of the greater good, that we're manifesting a life which is allowing people to, to, to go deeper and happier. So you guys can do that. It's your turn now. The jobs and all that is waiting for you. <laughs> you do it. Yeah? How do you know if you're on the right path? If you're really nutrition your soul or is, if it's just a feeling, how do you know? Yeah, good question. Yeah, everything has uh, some checks and balances, you know. So also spiritual development has its syllabus and its professors and uh, the persons who've graduated the school. Who, so we have to consult like that, you know. Like the, the, there's books on becoming a lawyer. You know, I can read them at home. And if I come out and say, hey, I read the books, I'm a lawyer, accept me as a lawyer. People know that you must be certified, having gone through this particular training and uh, qualified in a certain way. So, also with spirituality, it's sometimes so there's just an individual thing you can do, however, but it's a fine science, and uh, so that you can understand how you're doing with lust, with greed, with envy, how you're doing with anger, and these things you can learn from. And the Veda Foundation, Veda from there's nice books. There's a book called Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. If you can get the Bhagavad Gita, it's, check it out. It allows you to see yourself and to see the influences of your life. And then you can navigate better. Then you can also confirm if what I'm feeling is it just like a mental thing or it's something that comes on the path of spiritual evolution. It's expected that this happens. Thank you. Thank you for that question. Yeah, I feel so nourished.
to have spent time with all of you. And uh, I, I feel like I, I adopt you into my family. Please accept me as one of your own. Uh, it's a, life is a journey of souls. And uh, the, the more we try to share the good that we have, um, the better. So I'm available. If you ever want to check out what I'm up to, uh, I'm on Instagram and YouTube as Sadia the Monk, S A B Y A the Monk. Drop me a message, you know, tell me what's going on or comment on some of the things I'm blabbering about. And uh, maybe we all grow old still in connection. If I don't leave my body, I'll still be coming to Europe. And uh, relationships. And uh, you can have some monk in your pocket somewhere. You can always hit up. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.